Here on the Trading Coach Podcast, we talk a lot about accelerating your wealth, not just through trading, but by finding other forms of supplemental income as well. Well, an easy way to do that is by sharing your story by using Spotify for Podcast. Not only do they allow you to record and edit right from your phone or computer, but they'll also shoot it out everywhere that podcasts are heard and even pay you to do it, which still doesn't make sense, but hey, we'll take it, right? Video podcasts are also available as well, which is a really cool option if you're into sharing your charts and stuff like that. Best of all, it's free. So as someone who measures risk reward for a living, this is a no brainer. So if you're ready to create, don't wait, download the Spotify for podcasters app right now, or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Speaking of getting started, let's get started with the show. Hey traders, Akil Stokes here. Welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. Thanks as always for joining. Today we're going to talk a little bit about traders that are stuck and how to get unstuck or traders that lack consistency, meaning they kind of get the ball rolling and then they go all the way back to square one. Hopefully this podcast gives some ideas on, on how to get out of that trap. But before we get started, I want to ask a few favors for you guys. You know that we're trying to grow the show here. We're ranked top of the trading podcast world each and every year, but we've never been at the very, very top. It'd be really cool to get there. So if you haven't done so already, do me a favor, leave this podcast a rating or a review. I know you think that you may have, but double check just in case you didn't. Also, make sure you like or subscribe on whatever podcast app you're listening to this on. And lastly, this is a big one, make sure you share this episode and other episodes on social media. So for example, on Instagram, just take a picture when you listen to it, it as a story, tag me in it, and I'll show you some love. But any way that we can spread the word about the Trading Coach podcast is not only a great way to grow the show, but a great way to develop more consistent content as I get lots of my topic ideas from you guys. And today's episode is no different. It comes from a few conversations I was having with traders recently. One was having trouble getting the ball rolling. The other one kind of gets the ball rolling, then the ball stops and the ball stops, starts rolling backwards and kind of in that consistent kind of back and forth, two steps forward, three steps backwards type of phase for years and years and years and wants to get out of it. And bigger picture, we're going to cut straight to the chase. One of the biggest ways to become successful at anything, but especially trading, because trading is such a mental game, is we need to develop a firm, strong foundation of not just knowledge and skills, right? That's important as well, right? We always talk about foundational elements of learning price and then build from there, right? But we need a firm, sturdy, strong foundation of belief because ultimately we can be as skilled as we want with trading from a technical perspective or as knowledgeable as we want from a fundamental perspective but we're never going to take that consistent action if we don't have that belief and i was thinking about this for from a a few different examples i'll give you the sports example first and foremost because well if you're new i'm a sports nerd and everything revolves around sports but there are so many similarities between trading uh, trading and athletics because of just like you know there's the technical side and the mental side of trading there's the physical side and the mental side of sports and i was talking to or talking to someone about an athlete that i coached uh this past year she ended up being a runner-up in the 400 meter dash we had the first place finisher as well which is pretty cool we went one and two and this was a freshman so it was my first year working with her and the year was a little bit of a journey where she was really good in high school her last year in high school wasn't as good as her previous year and she started off this year a little bit shaky and we kind of knew that everything good was coming. I, I I know that it's a long learning curve when you're changing things, but you can tell that mentally she didn't have that belief in herself to run what I thought she could run. And I kept giving her kind of things to do like, hey, you got to try this. It's going to hurt. It's going to be painful. You're going to think you can't do it, but you got to do it. You got to break through that belief. You got to break through that comfort zone. And for the longest time, she never did it. She would get to that comfort zone and be like, ah, I run the other way and she would get to that comfort zone and I run the other way and I'm, I'm sitting there encouraging we got to break through it that's the only way you're going to bust through it right you got to be fearless and go for it and lo and behold one meet I don't know how or why she did it maybe she's got tired of it but 
she busted through that comfort zone. She put herself in a very uncomfortable position. She was going super fast. She ultimately paid the price for it at the very end, but she did something that she didn't think she was capable of doing. And ever since that moment, like a light switch went off. She had a, a, a brand new belief system that formed within her and she was fearless for the rest of the season. And every single race for the rest of the season, she continued to run faster and faster and faster, braver and braver and braver to the point where it was the, the second to last race of the season, the preliminary rounds for the 400 meter dash. She ran so fast that I actually had to tell her, hey, you got to chill. You got to back off a little bit because she was just she, she was going doing a little bit too much. And that's a cool problem to have where she was so fearless that we actually had to kind of stop her and be like, OK, that's enough. Let's let's calm it down a little bit. But the point was that she started believing her in herself so much that she felt invincible. She was fearless. She said, hey, I'm no longer going to overthink doing this. I'm no longer going to overthink doing that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to trust myself. I'm going to trust my training that I'm going to get the result. We had a similar conversation in church this morning. My pastor was telling this story about he's a recovering alcoholic and you know, he had gotten pulled over a lot of times when he was an alcoholic and he's been to jail a few times and had warrants out and all this stuff. And he was telling this story uh, similar to the stress versus the stress story. I always tell you guys about how when he was in that stage of his life, and he would see a cop behind him, he would get all nervous. He would freak out. We all do the same thing, right? We put both hands on the wheel. We stare at the speedometer and we start thinking like, okay, is my tail light out? Do I have my insurance up to date? Do I have my license on me, right? We, we, we get freaked out. At least I get freaked out uh, <laughs> by cops behind me. Um, and then he fast forwarded to now where he recently got pulled over and he started feeling the same type of fear, right? And whenever we, we see authority, we start feeling that type of fear where he's gripping the wheel. He's like, oh crap, do I have everything in order? Yes, 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 yes. And then he realized for a second, he said, wait a minute, he has no more warrants out for him, right? He's not driving under the influence. He's got all his registration and license and all that fun stuff up to date. He's going the correct speed limit. So what is there to fear? And in the past where he would approach the cop, the cop would come to the window and then, you know, you'd be all nervous. Hey, Mr. Officer, uh, uh, yeah, right? You just, you, 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 you feel more guilty, right? I, I, I hate that. We're like, I promise I'm not guilty. I'm just very, very nervous. Um, instead of feeling that way, he was able to speak to the officer very casually. Like, hey, officer, how you doing? You know, what's up? Why did you pull me over? Right? Because he's confident that there's nothing wrong with this situation. And in this particular situation, the officer was like, yeah, we thought this car was a different car that we were looking for. You did everything good. You're good to go. And, and he drove off. And But he mentioned he was thinking to himself, the, the power of having that belief, the power of being in control and knowing that I've dotted all my, my I's, I've crossed all my T's, I've checked all my boxes. I have nothing to be fearful in this situation allowed himself to handle himself with confidence and just do the right thing instead of making himself feel even more nervous and, and honestly look guilty in the eyes of the cops like this guy is is hiding something he approached it with confidence and the cop just let him go right the cop just let him go and it's the same thing as trading right when we get on these funks in trading and funks are going to happen right losses losing streaks that's all going to happen the, the the main problem that most traders run into is they start overthinking you know what did i do wrong why did this trade lose should i have done that should i have done this right we always we're always the hindsight trader where we look at it the next day and we're like oh i knew i should have entered here i knew i shouldn't have gotten involved there and and that stuff is cool to a certain extent it's good for review and and and, and further and continued education but it can also be very devastating to us because we're always judging and rating ourselves on the best case scenario which is easy but in and honestly it's it's pointless because it has nothing to do with your actual trade we have to be able to accept that sometimes in trading oftentimes in trading i should say we can do everything right and still be wrong on the other hand table you can do everything wrong and still be right which sucks in in bigger picture but we can do everything right and still be wrong and what we have to judge ourselves on is the process the problem is if you don't have a process, if you don't have belief in that process, there's no kind of ground to judge yourself on. So for example, when I look at a trading opportunity, win, loss, or draw, right? I judge myself on one thing, right? Did I follow my rules? I have a grading system. I grade myself on each trade. It's on analysis. It's on entry. It's on exit, right? And my goal is to get an A plus grade on each trade, meaning that 
I did everything I was supposed to do. Even when I review and, and, and look for anything that can stand out, I always ask myself, if I had this the same situation brought to me 10 times in a row, and this is gonna feel weird, right? I can take a losing trade, I can look at a chart, and traders will often ask me, right? I'll, I'll post something online, I'll lose, and be like, Akil, what did you do wrong? And I'm like, nothing. Yeah, but it lost. Like, if you if you can redo it, would you do anything different? I'm like, no. I, I would. So you would take the loss again? Yes, right? Because I have a process. I have a process that is tried, it is tested, it shows me I have an edge, and how I judge myself isn't the result, isn't by the result of the trade, but it's by the process that I take the trade with. That's the whole process over outcome, right? We want to judge ourselves on what we do instead of the actual outcome of the trade. Now, I'm able to do that because I have a massive belief in myself, just like that runner I told you about earlier, right? I can approach a chart in a trade with 100% confidence. I mean, I no longer fear about getting in early, getting in late. Should I be involved? Should I not be involved? Moving stocks, moving targets, right? I am a fearless machine in the markets. I get a little bit emotional on the inside, but as far as like my reactions, I am a fearless machine. And the only reason that I'm a fearless machine is because years ago, I broke through that comfort zone. I used to be fearful. And when I was fearful, I would be late to entering trades because I second guessed myself if it was right. I would be early to entering trades because I was scared that the market would move without me. I would move stops back trying to avoid getting stopped out. If I just move it a little bit back, maybe the market will will give me hope, right? Give me a give me an out and reverse and, and I can make some profit. I used to take targets earlier because I was afraid that, oh my gosh, the market actually did what I thought it was going to do and now it's going up, but I don't think it's going to go up as much as I think it's going to go up. So I should just take some profit now because you can't go broke taking profits, right? I used to do all of that stuff. And those are all fearful reactions. And those were the things that caused me to be in these streaks where I would have really, really good streaks of trading. Then I'd have really, really, really bad streaks of trading. And for some reason, my, my well, I know the reason, but my bad streaks of trading would always make up for my, my good streaks of trading, right? There was a time where I, I was like a 70% trader, but still losing money right? Because I was winning, but I was doing dumb stuff and sabotaging my wins. So I wasn't winning as much as I should win on each trade. I was also sabotaging my losses by taking bigger losses than I should have on all my losses. So you combine smaller wins and bigger losses. That is a that is a recipe for disaster in the market. But that's what a lot of you guys are doing. And that's why a lot of you guys are, are sitting sideways on these equity curves, or, or we call it slowly bleeding, right? Where you've got a wound, right? And maybe you put some band-aids on it because you think that's the that's going to be the, the 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 say all be all but the band the wound is so big that the band-aid doesn't allow the wound to heal and you just slowly drip and bleed out and, and that's one of the worst ways to go right death by a thousand cuts but the change that i made that gave me the ability to be so black and white so soulless so fearless right? soulless is not the well I, I think of myself as a soulless mercenary in the market anyway but fearless i guess is the better word in the market is that belief I'm not afraid to go out in that race and make it hurt because I know that I'm strong enough to make it to the finish line. I'm not afraid when that cop pulls me over because I know I've got everything checked. I didn't do anything wrong. There's nothing, well, you know, this world's a little bit different, but there should be nothing that he can get me on. You never know. I still get a little bit nervous for other reasons, but we we won't get into that. Um, <laughs> that's a story for another podcast. But the fact is, I'm not as scared as I used to be when I was a 20 something year old kid and, and, and thought that each time I got arrested, they were going to get me for tents or this or that or, or whatnot. I'm, I'm more casual because I know that I did everything. And the same thing is trading. I know that I did my back testing. I know that I've proven my edge. I know that I've had enough time in the market where I'm confident that I, I will still get emotional, but I won't make emotional reactions in the market. And because of that, I am fearless. And when I'm fearless, it allows me to execute my plan consistently. When I can consistently execute my plan, that means I can uh, consistently exploit and extract my edge from the market. And when you do those two things, you become become a consistently profitable trader. So it's not always the strategy. And in many cases, it's not even the strategy. If you have something that is proven, if you've done the work to prove it and not just prove it, but build your belief, the difference between success and failure is the six inches between your ears. It's you. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Hey, if you want to share any of your war stories and things that you've overcome or, or techniques that you've used to overcome different errors in your trading, 
feel free to do it below. I know there's a comment section under YouTube. Spotify has a, a box where I think you can enter stuff. I, I, I do go through and read that. Or of course, you can get to me on social media at Akil Stokes RTM, right? When you shared as you listened and loved this podcast, just shoot me a message saying, hey, Akil, I was there. I used to struggle with blank. I started doing this to overcome that. And I will share that with our trading community. That way your story can help others just what I'm trying to do here with the Trading Coach Podcast. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe, like, rate, review, and I'll see you guys next episode of the Trading Coach Podcast.